Well, hey, House Church family, we're so excited to be worshiping with you in homes all across Lincoln. I want to give a shout out to our newest house church at the McLeods, Nate and Rachel leading. Welcome to the House Church family. We are thrilled to get to worship with you once a month. So thanks for dedicating this time to grow in community with each other and in our walk with the Lord. We're switching things up a little bit tonight. We are going to continue our foundation series on the theme of worship. And so we're actually gonna have worship after we're done talking here, just a little bit about that. So thanks for being a part. I'm so excited about this message of worship and really this whole series. We've been just talking about some very foundational things, things like salvation, how God desires to have a relationship with us. Um, identity, our place in God's family, growth. How do we grow in our walk with the Lord? How do we learn God's family values? So I love all these things, but one thing that's just as foundational in my book is the idea of worship. And so far in all those other topics that we've discussed, we've looked at those topics in the light of God being our father and how we respond to God as a father, how he's offered us salvation, he's offered us adoption. He is our father. But just like us, how, how we as human beings, we're multifaceted. We have different interests, different gifts, different character traits, different personality traits. God's identity is multifaceted. And yes, he's a good father, but he's also holy. He's also our creator. He's the king of the universe. He's a mighty warrior. He's good. He's just. He's perfect. And so when we, when we begin to see God like this for who he really is, worship is the natural response it's the most natural thing we can do is to respond to who God is, is worship. The scripture shows us over and over again what an appropriate response is to the creator of the universe. And so before we do, though, I want to just say that, you know, a lot of times when we hear the word worship, we immediately go to singing together in church. That time, that first 20 minutes of our service where we're singing songs. And yes, that is part of it. But I believe that worship is so much more than what we do in those few moments together on Sunday mornings. It's so much more than when we sing songs at the top of our lungs in our car when no one's around. Worship is so much more than music. And we're going to look at what the scriptures say. Romans chapter 12 Verse one, it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Well, anytime you see the word therefore in the Bible, you always want to look and see what it's there for. Right? So obviously a point has just been made and then he's saying, therefore, because of this, this is what you need to do. So when it's saying, therefore, the whole first seven chapters of Romans are just establishing who Christ is and the sacrifice that he made and the, the payment that he made for our sins. It's essentially the story of the gospel. So when it's saying, therefore, it's saying in the light of the gospel, in the light of the truth that you've already heard, it says, therefore, in view of God's mercy. So therefore, in the light of what the gospel is and because of God's mercy in response to what he's done for you, it says, offer your bodies. See, worship, it begins in the heart. It's done from the heart. We have to offer our bodies. Worship is done. It's a choice that we make from our heart, but it's done with our bodies. It's a deliberate expression of love, honor, and reverence for God. So he says, offer your bodies as a living 
sacrifice. It's a way of saying, God, I'm going to lay my life down in order to lift you up. Now, if you remember the, the people of Israel, they spent lots of years offering sacrifices. Most of those sacrifices, though, that was the end of their life. But this is saying, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So it's saying, God, here's my life. I'm giving it to you. And, and it's no longer I who live, but you who live. So it's not just offering my physical body. It's not just singing songs. It's offering my plans, my dreams, my goals, my gifts. Maybe you're a creative person. Maybe you're mechanical, you're mechanically inclined or technologically inclined. Maybe you're athletic and you have strong athletic abilities. This is saying offer your life, your whole life, everything that you have as your offering to God, a living sacrifice. God, may every day that I live be an offering of worship to you. It says, when you do this, it is your spiritual act of worship. This is your true and proper worship. So in this chapter, he's not talking about singing songs. He's asking, are you willing to lay down your life your goals, your dreams, your plans, your preferences, and offer it to God and say, God, I lay my life down in order that you would be lifted up. That's our spiritual act of worship. That's our proper and the only fitting way to respond to the gospel, to what Jesus has done for us. But all throughout scripture, we do see worship done in a musical singing setting. And so we don't want to ignore that. And that's why we make worship a part of house church. That's why we make worship a part of our Sunday morning services, because worship is commanded in the Bible. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell, dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Psalm 147 says, Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the heart. So it's commanded in Psalms, over and over again, there are over 400 times in the Bible where it commands us to sing. There are multiple times where it says, play music on the harp, on the lyre, play the cymbals. There are so many times that it talks about making music and singing to the Lord. But not only are we commanded to do it, but God demonstrates singing. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, it says, he rejoices over you with singing. So I don't know if you're one of those people that could just sit in a worship service for hours. Maybe you're like, I don't even need that preaching stuff. I could just go to church and just sing for for days. Or maybe you're one of those people that's like, yeah, it's just that I could I could just do without the singing stuff. I don't know where you're at, but the Bible commands it and God demonstrates it. And that's why we put a priority on it, on taking a moment to express through song, express through instruments, our gratitude for what God has done for us. And when it comes to worship, and, and I want to encourage you too, it's not just on Sunday mornings for that first 20 minutes. I believe that singing, worshiping through song ought to be a part of our daily lives. So I know that's a stretch for some of you, but I want to encourage you this week, find a moment, close your doors, go in the bathroom and turn the fan on, but find a time where you can sing and stretch yourself to sing out of gratitude for what God has done for you. But when, when it comes to worship, I just want to encourage us with one more thought, and that's this that posture matters. And not, and not just posture matters, but posture matters 
over preferences. And the reason I say that is this, because the predominant word that we see in the Bible for worship actually has a, a connotation of bowing and of surrender, of humility. And so when we come into worship, the worship that God is looking for and that is commanded throughout scripture is one of awe and reverence. And when we come into God's presence, we come with humility and with a posture of surrender. Remember, it's our response to what God has done and who he is. And when we see who God really is, the creator of the universe, the king of the world, when we see him for who he is, the correct response is to come in in humility, in honor. So when I say posture matters, it matters. It matters to God. And so when we come into worship and we come in with our own preferences, we come in with our own uh, thoughts on what so which song should be sung, um, who we prefer to be leading them. When we come in, in that type, with that type of a heart, and we're coming in with a heart um, of pride and maybe even a little bit of judgment. And so when I say posture matters over preference, I want to encourage us, no matter what your preferences are, if you prefer to uh, sing for hours and skip the sermon, or if you wish, if you prefer to just roll in 15 minutes late so that you don't have to do any of the singing stuff, or if you prefer a certain type of song, let me just encourage you that when we worship together, the goal is with one voice and in unity that we would lift up the name of Jesus, that we would offer our bodies, our preferences as living sacrifices out of response to what God has done. So I don't know what your next steps are, but I would encourage us as we go into a time of worship here, I would just ask us to each ask the Lord to search our hearts, to say, God, you know me and you know my heart. God, are there places in my heart that I'm not offering to you as a living sacrifice? Are there gifts that you've given to me that I have not fully surrendered to you? Or when it comes to singing, to singing and worship, God, have I come in with a posture of pride without a willingness to be free and vulnerable and open to whatever you want to do in me and through me? Have I come with an attitude of judgment on people around me? Or if I come into worship with a willingness to surrender, to fully surrender. And whether that means I bow my head, whether that means I stand with my arms raised and held high, but have I come with a posture of surrender? Psalm chapter 29 verse two says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. As we sing this song together, I invite you to take whatever that next step is in vulnerability and expressing worship to God because his name is due full glory. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness, friends. He is holy. He is worthy. He is deserving of our, our praise. So I just hope and pray that we can use these next few moments to give him the glory, do his name, to respond in a way that is appropriate, which is full and complete surrender to the God who saves us. God, would you help us as we worship you today? May we worship you. Like your word says, in spirit and in truth, from our hearts, from a heart that is grateful for who you are and what you've done. May we respond to you in our worship today in Jesus' name. Jesus.
Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest in your name. 